welcome to you all. Yay! It's the IWW Songs Workshop. I'm Greg Giorgio. I'll say, say a little bit more about that in a minute. But first, uh, I just wanted to start us off in the right, in the right spirit. All right. Praise boss when morning work bells chime. Praise him for bits of overtime. Praise him whose wars we love to fight. Praise him, fat leech and parasite. Aw, hell. <laughs> so, if, if you could do, if you could do the one minute version of what the IWW song is about, that's it. Right? It's, it's humorous. It makes fun of the boss class. It, it states firmly a class identity, working class identity. And it just thumbs its nose at authority. That's the Wobbly song. And if I could, if I could do the one-minute version of this workshop, that's it. See it. But no, we're not going to do that. We're doing, we're doing something different today. Uh, we're going to go a little bit more in depth about it. And rather than just have a a Wobbly song swap or a a sing-along per se, we wanted to talk a little bit about. Uh, where these songs came from, how they've been used, modern adaptations, and sort of the evolution of the folk process with the IWW songs. You know, they are unique because other union songs very often are very, have express a very militant position about a certain issue, but a lot of the IWW songs are really more broad than that. They really have that, that worldview, uh, let's build a new society from the ashes of the old, class conscious perspective. That's what makes them really kind of bite a little bit. And that's what's always attracted them to me even before I was a member. So now that I've stated that I am a member, well, I think we have a few other members in the room, don't we? Oh, well, we have a couple in here. Uh, the music, you mean the music? Uh, the IWW per se. And by the way, Joe Jenks, your artist in resident, is another member of the IWW. Gotten to know Joe, as you know, you get a little street cred when you when you carry the red card because the other members sort of say, "Hey, yeah, I gotta get to know you a little bit more." But um, uh, I joined the union about 24 years ago. Uh, I had been a, a, a union insurgent on my job, and I actually got shut out of the contract that uh, members of my workforce in a couple of different departments were included in a new bargaining unit contract. And uh, I spent the next 20 some years after that fighting for the union, even though I wasn't a member of it. But at the same time, I joined the IWW and acted like I, I had some, uh, some traction. And I did, I did exert some. And uh, being in the IWW has been a, a big influence on me. Utah Phillips is a big influence on me. He's one of the main reasons why I got involved. And why I knew Utah was because I was a folk music uh, volunteer locally and uh, you know setting up microphones on the stage and getting to talk to people you get to know them a little bit so uh, excuse me just a second and let me get my uh, some of my notes out here so I don't I don't lose my spot um, and we'll introduce a fantastic lineup of musicians for you shortly as well so um, I've also I've also done my fair share of concert promoting with IWW musicians over the years too, so uh, I sometimes uh, get involved in, in putting together shows too, and that, that's always a lot of hard work as those of you at PMN know. Um, and last summer, uh, we did the Joe Hill 100 tour across the country, uh, which Charlie was a part of, and uh, uh, Joe, Joe Jenks was at the Schenectady uh, version of the, of the Joe Hill 100 tour, uh, along with Magpie and, uh, and George Mann. And uh, we, we packed the house that night. We really got inspired. We, uh, we got some people interested in, in knowing and singing some of Joe Hill's songs. And uh, that whole process has turned into uh, helping promote another tour, which is going to happen this coming year, which will be sort of an extension of the Joe Hill 100 tour, but more, uh, more of a general labor songs and IWW focus tour. Um, I think I already touched on why I think these songs are important. 
is because the IWW's vision, an anti-capitalist vision of building a, a new society uh, in the shell of the old or from the ashes of the old where uh, we sort of abolish the, the wage system and learn how to work uh, as a collective society versus a society where the, the individuals uh, in the ruling class have all of this wealth and call all the shots. And the IWW songs on so many levels have done that uh, very well for so long. And it's really about helping to educate a, a working class and keep a working class culture alive. And these songs um, have done that in a number of ways by expropriating the boss's culture, by using popular tunes. Uh, in the early days of the IWW, the most popular way to expro expropriate that culture, the most common way, was to use the, the hymnal tunes that the Salvation Army was playing on the street corners. Because in pre-radio and television and the internet, of course, the way to, to get people's attention was to do street speaking and street playing. So as a group, the IWW got used to singing as a group together. And you know, when you sing together, you learn how to work together. And you learn how to struggle together. And of course, that's, that's the essence of why we're here. Um, where do these songs come from? Did they just sort of self-generate out of the, the genesis of the IWW? No, they didn't, really. Um, there was uh, an American class cultural uh, conscious history of song making. Uh, the Knights of Labor was an industrial union model like the IWW, not a lot of craft unions, but trying to build one big union in an industry and uh, join those industries across uh, uh, craft lines into one huge big union, uh, the one big union model ideal of the IWW. And the Knights of Labor back in the second half of the, uh, of the 19th century, uh, for instance, used to be a singing union. And uh, they had a song called Hold the Fort, which was later adapted by the IWW. So the Knights of Labor used to sing, Hold the fort, ye knights of labor, union men be strong. Side by side we battle onward, victory will come. And the IWW comes along, and there had been members of the Knights of Labor who end up joining the IWW later on in 1905 and beyond. So they changed the song to, Hold the fort, for we are coming, union folk be strong. So they, they just adapted it slightly, the folk process in active motion there. Uh, of course, the IWW's strength in its early days was its itinerant, footloose workforce, right? They were hoboing in and out of town on the trains. Um, and of course, the hobo culture had its own subculture of music. So, you know, uh, Haywire Mac McClintock, a wobbly from the heyday, uh, he claims that he wrote Hallelujah, I'm a Bum. Well, Haywire Mac McClintock did not write that song. It, it was, existed long before he joined the IWW, and he didn't write it. Because other men, uh, and probably women, were singing it before he, he came along. So, uh, you know, in the... Uh, in the uh, hobo days after after the Civil War, you know, they were hoboys, right? They got on the trains and traveled, and uh, itinerant uh, agricultural workers, for the most part, and other odd jobs. Uh, they used to sing things like, you know, uh, why don't you work like other folks do? Well, how can I get a job when you're holding down to her? They, you know, I uh, went to the door and I asked for some bread. The lady said, scram bum, the baker is dead. Well, the IWW comes along and writes, writes a verse that says, and, and develops a verse, and adapts a verse, and adopts the verse that says, I worked overtime like a big greedy slob. Now the warehouse is full and I'm out of a job. That's a class conscious line. That's not just a hobo line. I'm moving from one place to the next and woe is me because I can't find good work. Now you got the, now you got the spark there. So that's, the, the adaptation was, was both creative and practical uh, for, for workers trying to join the movement. Um, 
So I think we already touched on it, but I'll, I'll say it again because I think these are important points about what makes these songs special and what makes them a wobbly song being just uh, differentiated from just a simple protest song. Um, that working class, uh, that the working class and the employing class have nothing in common. You know, that's the preamble to the IWW uh, Constitution. The idea that we build our unions in industrial form, not in craft form. We won't walk across each other's picket lines because the carpenters and the plumbers and the, and the masons are all working on one site. They shouldn't have different unions. They should all be an IU 330 construction workers union. Thank you very much. Uh, general strike idealization. We've got a song coming about that later, I believe. Yes. Uh, a modern I general strike idealization song. Um, and, and solidarity personified, having each other's back, solidarity unionism. So not just the song Solidarity Forever, but other gestures of, that, that show that, that uh, people's strength is in their, is in their solidarity and that uh, we have to recognize who's who and which side we're on. Uh, certainly a militant, uh, a lot of the songs have a militant sort of uh, fight back perspective. And, and then the other part that I think is most important maybe the, the most important part for this workshop is to see how modern songwriters uh, adopt this, this uh, persona in their songs, this identity in their songs. And then I'll give you some more examples too as we go along of modern IWW songwriters who even change the older traditional IWW songs into newer songs that adapt to their conditions. So that's kind of where we're going today. <laughs> okay, so I've said all I'm going to say, and I think my good friend Charlie King and fellow worker Charlie is, is going to do a song from that early day, right back to those hobo and itinerant workers, but they've already joined the IWW, and it's, it's a song I think some of you will recognize. I think one of the things to say about um, the hobo, the tramp, the itinerant worker, was not uh, to stress their low station or their vulnerability, but their uh, unique uh, placement to be the uh, vanguard of uh, labor militancy. Uh, because they never thought of themselves as being stuck in one place. And uh, they always saw themselves as people with complete mobility. So that um, when the job got tough, when the food got bad, when the pay wasn't delivered, they always had the freedom to move on to another job because freight trains run every day, don't they? Absolutely. this song. One is that it's a Joe Hill song. Uh, another is that uh, like a lot of IWW songs, um, it has a certain uh, religious cast. Uh, surprising since uh, the IWW was a fairly militant, non-religious, perhaps even atheistic uh, movement, singular among American labor movements. And um, but they're always talking about dying and going to heaven. And, uh, uh, and they do that because um, it was so central to the IWW philosophy and strategy to uh, have a workforce that is well read and well thought out and is not to be mystified in, with all of the ways that uh, the, the upper class has mystified slaves and wage slaves for uh, centuries. And so uh, heaven was not denied, but rather was just seen as one more workplace, uh, one more place you can get evicted from, and uh, St. Peter will be the straw boss there. Um, and I think all that comes up in the train. 
another thing about the song, I, 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 I like the way the song begins. There's an, uh, a Woody Guthrie song uh, that starts, Hey there, did you hear the news? Sack of work, you trimming shoes. Uh, a good opening line to catch people's attention when, unlike you, uh, people are restless moving around. Maybe you're uh, uh, hopping up on a soapbox and you want to get folks' attention. If you all will shut your traps, I will tell you about a chap who was broken and up against it too for fame. He was not the kind to shirk. He was looking hard for work. But he heard the same old story every way. Tramp, 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 keep on the tramping. Nothing doing here for you. If I catch you round again, you will wear the ball and chain. Keep on tramping, that's the best thing you can do. You catch that next time. He walked up and down the street till the shoes wore off his feet. In a house he spied a lady cooking stew. So he said, how do you do? Can I chop some wood for you? What the lady told him made him feel so blue. Tramp, 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 tramp keep on a tramp. Nothing new in here for you. Nothing new in here for you. If I catch you round again, if I catch you round again, you will wear the ball and chain. Keep on tramping. That's the best thing you can do. Across the street, a sign he read. Worked for Jesus, so it said, and he said, This is my chance, I'll surely try. Then he flopped down on the floor till his knees grew rather sore. But at any time he heard the preacher cry, Guess what? Tramp, 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 keep on the tramp. Nothing new. Nothing new in here for you. If I catch you if I catch you around again, you will wear the ball and chain. Keep a tramp and a cop, and the copper made him stop, and he asked, hey, Bo, when'd you blow into town? And he took him to the judge, and the judge, he said, oh, fudge, bums that have no money need not come around. Tramp, 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 keep on tramp. Sorry day when his soul did pass away. He was sure he'd go to heaven when he died. When he reached the pearly gate, Santa Peter, mean old skate, slammed the gate right in his face and loudly cried. Tramp, 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 keep on the tramp. Nothing to do with here for you. If I catch you round again, you will wear the ball and chain. Keep on tramping. went to hell with the devil for to dwell for no reason that he had no better place to go and he said I'm full of sin so for Christ's sake let me in but the devil said oh beat you're a ball tramp 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 keep on the tramp nothing new in here for you if I catch you round again you will wear the ball and chain. Keep on tramping, that's the best that you can do. The train. Famous Civil, Civil War song. song. Yeah. That's something that the Wobblies did a lot. Absolutely. Take. 
songs that are already written. I can sing the first two lines in Swedish. Many, many years ago, there was a short Canadian documentary produced. I think it was a half hour Life of Joe Hill. And the host of the program uh, mostly narrated and sang all the songs by himself, and there was some other little dramatic stuff that sort of broke the show up. And when he sang that song, he was so hot under the studio lights as he strung his guitar with the, 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 the rhythm of tramp, tramp, tramp. The beads of sweat were dropping off <laughs> his head on camera, and you could see them gleaming in the studio lights. I'll never forget that image. And now here's Annie and Peter. Yay! And our, uh, our alternative name is, is Annie and Peter Peterson, because somehow when you get to the Patterson, it always comes Peterson. Um, Anyways, yeah, we're glad to be here. Um, we thought we'd do a Malvina Reynolds song. Start with the other song. What? I was going to say. Let's do the walkways. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell, is our relationship. <laughs> Over 30 years of trying out marriage. Okay. We're going to start with so. uh, a new song. Written by Malvina Reynolds yeah, this is in not the new. 70s, I think. Yeah, um, this is as new as the 70s. And uh, we call it the first Occupy song. It's called They've Got the World in Their Pocket. We figure it's a song that has to do with the, uh, the maldistribution of wealth following on Charlie's wonderful triple up song last night. <laughs> the chorus goes like this They got the world in their pocket.
uh, Greg was talking about the way uh, artists today take uh, old wobbly songs and rework them. And one of the people that is the best at doing this is Billy Bragg. Um, I remember Pete Seeger, a few years before he died, was saying, oh, we've got to get more young people, you know, into the movement and <laughs> singing and stuff like that. Of course, he wasn't yeah. at this year's gathering. But anyway, he was saying... He would have thought Billy was young. No, no, he, yeah, he yeah, said, yeah. he said, I like that Billy Bragg. He really is carrying on the work. You know? <laughs> he was a big fan of Billy's. So Billy wrote the uh, introduction to our new book, Rise Again and uh, partly on Pete's rec request. Um, and this particular one, he's actually, as you probably know, Billy Bragg has written new melodies to a number of um, old Woody, Woody Guthrie songs. Yeah, that's or great. ones that Woody Guthrie didn't necessarily even write melodies to. This is actually, he's actually done it to some uh, other songs, and he did it to one of Joe Hill's songs, There's a Power in the Union, which of course was originally, There's Power in the Blood of the Lamb. That was the melody that Joe Hill used. But um, Billy wrote a new melody uh, for the verses, and he took a Civil War song called um, Rally Round the Flag. Again, George Frederick Bruce. Yes. <laughs> he used that for the, for the uh, chorus. Uh, the Union forever defending our rights. Down with the black flag, all workers unite. With, with our, our brothers, brothers and our sisters, sisters from many far off lands. There is power in the union. And Peter and I are proud members of the Musicians Union, so we want to do this tune. And um, gosh, if you got your rise of singing, you, I mean, rise again, you can look at the words if you want. It's on page 287 uh, in the you work chapter. Sing on the chorus. And actually, it's right next to the original Joe Hill version. <laughs> There is power in the factory, power in the land, power in the hands of the workers. But it all amounts to nothing if together we don't stand. There is power in the union. Now the lessons of the past, we all learn with workers' blood. The mistakes of the bosses we must pay for. Trenches full of mud. War has always been the boss's way, sir. Yeah, well, they were. 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 Yeah, well, they were.
together and uh, I'm hoping Evan's going to do the picket line song too. That's our plan. Yeah, yeah. So here's, uh, here's some modern adaptations of the wobbly tradition from Ann Feeney and Evan Greer.
want to. Working folk of all countries unite. tune that I wrote, uh, a 150 year old union song that I wrote like 10 years ago. Uh, and, uh, it's an attempt to carry on uh, a bit of the wobbly tradition. It's related to the other song that I'll sing in a minute um, because it's a song that uses comedy to mask the fact that it's actually about beating up scaps um, and, uh, and kind of present uh, the militancy of the labor movement in a way that's maybe more palatable uh, for people. So, and uh, Anne sings it with me on my album as well and we'll do so here. Oh, I would never walk across a picket line Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes Long live the union, cross my heart and hope to die If I should ever walk across a picket line That's the chorus My mother never told me what was right or what was wrong Never taught me to play banjo, never taught me to write songs. One thing that she taught me, I'll remember for all time. And that's that you should never walk across a picket line. Oh, I would never walk across a solidarity. Solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes. Long live, long live the union. Cross my heart and hope to die. If I, if I should ever walk. Where the workers were on strike The company had called in scabs To break the union's might Mom went to the front And she addressed those greedy slime Said I dare any of you men To walk across this picket line Oh, I would never walk across a picket line came forward, and he had something to say. No woman will stand between me and one day's pay. I don't care about the others. No, I'm taking what is mine. With that, he tried to walk across our union's picket line. Oh, I would never walk across a picket line. rock that she could find and when he called the cops on her she kicked his behind and said that's what you get when you walk across a union's picket line everybody i would never walk across a picket line solidarity forever don't mean just sometimes long live long live that union cross my heart and hope to die if i should ever walk across a picket line now, in the wobbly tradition, there's a final uplifting verse. <laughs> and I can still remember what my mother used to say. 
We're fighting for a better world, not just for better pay. And if we stick together, then we'll win this fight in time. As long as we don't walk across each other's picket lines. Here we go! I will never walk across a picket line. Schimmel song. She's uh, Malvina's daughter, and uh, it, it, it deals with a subject that's near and dear to my heart, for which I wrote a, a polka, which you can find in Rise Again. And uh, it addresses a certain class of people in this country who are indolent, do very little in the way of work, <laughs> and live at taxpayers' expense. And I mean, I'm fed up with it, and you should be too. <laughs> So, for your edification, I present Nancy Schimmel's song followed by mine. I've read some, I've read some science fiction, and I know how to tell a human from an android. It's a lesson I learned well. If it hasn't got a navel, it's an alien at best. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. It's the belly button test. It's the belly button test. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. If it cannot pass the test, the belly button test. It's from some lawyer's office or a pterodactyl's nest. Don't tell me it's a person. It is a thing possessed. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. It's the belly button test. It's the belly button test. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. Corporations buy elections and politicians too. And though they cannot reproduce, they surely love to screw. <laughs> All the forests and the oceans and the planet without rest. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. It's the belly button test. It's the belly button test. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. It's the belly button test. It's the belly button test. talking aid for dependent corporations. Free enterprise, ha! <laughs> the cruelest of lies that we spent billions and billions just last year. Now if they paid their fair share, we'd have billions to spare. It's time to tell them the buck stop here. Consider Charlie Hurwitz, the CEO at Maxim, 
Holding Redwood Forest hostage in his vicious little tax scam. It's clear cut we picked up the tab for Charlie's union busting. We paid him to pollute our water. Jesus, that's disgusting. Charlie won't repay 500 million that he stole. It was actually 1.6 billion, but who's counting? From the... Uh, uh, the Houston from the Houston SNL. I was going to say, well, what are the chords? I know the words. <laughs> For Houston SNL, what say we kick them off the dole? It's time to end welfare as we know it. And get those greedy chiselers off the dole. It's time, it's time to end welfare as we know it. Teach them a little self-control. Far too long we've allowed these corporate hogs to belly up to the public trough. No more welfare as we know it. No more handouts. Cut them off. That Taco Bell Chihuahua begs for bucks for Frito Lay. Poppin' fresh and Pillsbury get more dough every day. That thief Ronald McDonald and his sidekick Mayor McCheesy hamburglarize our treasury in ways that make me queasy. That nasty little mermaid took tax dollars overseas to hire thugs who bring poor Haitian workers to their knees. It's time to end welfare as we know it. Get those green chiselers off the door. It's time, it's time to end welfare as we know it. Teach them, teach them a little self-control. For far too long, we've allowed these corporate hogs to belly up to the public trough. No more welfare as we know it. No more from sea to shining sea. We must intervene to break this cycle of dependency. ADM and Goldman Sachs. Cargill, uh, Ford, and Boeing. Uh, hmm? Cargill, Ford, and Boeing. Cargill, Cargill. Ford didn't take a bailout, though. <laughs> well, she rides a Boeing, though. I know that. And, yeah, we'll get that with Boeing, that's for sure. Uh, Boeing. <laughs> I A T T and Verizon. Oh my God! And that welfare line keeps growing, growing, growing. Our Congress says we can't afford to subsidize the needy. But before we slash that safety net, let's tell the truly greedy we're gonna end welfare as we know it. It's time, it's time to end welfare as we know. Teach them, teach them a little self-control. For far too long, for far too long, we've allowed these corporate hogs to belly up to the public trough. No, I didn't hear anybody oinking with me. It's fun, you'll feel better after you do it. For far too long, we've allowed these Corporate hogs to belly up to the public trough. No more welfare as we know it. No more handouts. Cut them off. And I mean business. No more handouts. Cut them off. It's for their own good. No more handouts. Cut them off. Here's a Joe Hill song, um, and I think it, you know this is another great example of, of wobbly music because it, um, you know, it's incredibly militant. It's it's a song, um, and actually Pete Seeger, um, who probably popularized it, um, 
kind of like toned it down a little bit. I'm going to sing the original Robley lyrics. Um, and you know, you'll see that the theme of the song is actually, again, pretty militant, uh, pretty in your face, but it's told with humor, which I think is what the Wops had going for them, perhaps more than anything else. All the workers on the SP line for strikes and out of call. But Casey Jones, the engineer, he wouldn't strike at all. His boiler, it was leaking, and his driver's on the bump. And his wheeling and its bearings, they were all out of plumb. Casey Jones kept his junk pile running. Casey Jones was working double time. Casey Jones, he got a wooden medal for being good and faithful on the SP line. Workers said to Casey, won't you help us win this strike? But Casey said, let me alone, you'd better take a hike. Then someone put a bunch of railroad tie across the track. And Casey hit the river with an awful smack. Casey Jones hit the river bottom. Casey Jones broke his blooming spine. Casey Jones turned into an angel. Got a trip to heaven on the SP line. Heaven right up to that pearly gate Said I'm Casey Jones, the guy that pulled the SP freight You're just the man, said Peter, our musicians are on strike You can get a job of scabbing anytime you like Casey Jones got a job in heaven Casey Jones was doing mighty fine Casey Jones, he went scabbing on the angels Just like he did to workers on the SP line got together and they said it wasn't fair for Casey Jones to go around to scab it everywhere. The Angels Union number 23, they sure were there and they promptly fired Casey down the golden stair. Casey Jones went to hell a flying. Casey Jones, the devil set on fire. Casey Jones, you get busy shoveling sulfur. That's what you get for scabbing on the ST line. again to both of them for, for doing that lively little mini set, <laughs> conjoined set there. Um, I didn't even know I could do this workshop. You know, I had a good, my good friend Terry Robin said, Greg, you know, you should come and do a workshop at PMN. What's the matter with you? How come you haven't done this before? I said, I don't know what's the matter with me, but I'll do it. So, you know, when I, when I got in touch with Ben, you know, we agreed to talk on the phone. He said, so how do you think this thing's going to work? I said, well, you know, I sort of have this idea, and we chatted about it a little bit. I said, you know, I want to get some modern IWW-type songs in here, and I'm not sure which is the best way to go. But you know, you know that Dave Robick song? He's another Wobbly, another IWW member, a tremendous songwriter. Uh, and so, oh, Ben says, oh, I know that song, and I won't tell you what song it is, because he's going to perform it. But. So, he picks up his guitar while we're talking on the phone, and he starts, let me see if I got this right. Sure enough, he did. And then I'm singing the chorus with him over the phone. I said, okay, you got the audition, you're in. So here's Ben Gross coming. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I just called to organize this uh, workshop, uh, Greg. <laughs> um, well, this is actually one of the first songs I learned on the guitar. Um, like. When I, when I got like a, a nice guitar and it wasn't like one of those old style campfire songs, it's like one of my first activist songs that I learned. Uh, David Robux wrote this probably like in the late 90s or so. Um, yeah. So anyway, a true uh, wobbly song, modern wobbly song. <coughs>
song we need. No one driving from town to town. No one at the registers. All the highways were shut down. The cars were stuck in the garage. CEOs on bikes. When all the minimum wage workers went on strike, there was no one flipping burgers. All the grills were cold. Onion rings were in their bags. Fries, fries were growing mold. No, there were no baristas. There were no baristas at Starbucks. Would you like, oh, it's got it in there. When all the minimum wage workers went on strike. That's why Peter knows these lyrics. <laughs> the fruit was falling off the trees. No one to load the truck. The corn was rotting on the stocks. No farm hands to shuck. Says 
is to help the team and serve the company. But why should Walmart's profits soar when none come back to me? Oh, living wage, living wage, Walmart, can't you see? 10.50, 10.50 an hour still leaves us in poverty. Oh, living wage, living wage, hear the words we say. We will live much better when we all get higher pay. Join the strike, our number's growing strong. Stand up and join the fight, our number's growing strong. Support the workers' strike and sing this freedom song. We're fighting for 15 fair hours and respect. And once we win on all of these, just think what we'll win next. Oh, living wage, living wage, Walmart, can't you see? And he was a wandering worker who eventually ended up working, I think, on a tugboat job in the New York Harbor somewhere. Uh, he was a musician, and he wrote songs, and he was also a writer of uh, quite unique talent. And he wrote essays and articles uh, for the uh, union publications. He also wrote at least a couple of books, one of which was Starving Amidst Too Much, which was actually a very well-researched uh, look into the economics of food production in the early 20th century. It's a fantastic little book, which basically gives the argument for uh, a collectivized, socialized, non-capitalist economy while also skewering the capitalist system of food production, which was killing people with bad factory food already at that point. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know, he wrote, the song that, that he wrote that's probably the most well-known is one called The Popular Wobbly. And it, I'm as mild-mannered as I can be, and I've never done them harm that I can see. I'm as gentle as a lamb, but they take me for a ram. They go wild, simply wild over me. Oh, the cop, he went wild over me. Okay. Uh, another expropriated popular tune. So I will conclude our workshop by just saying that uh, you as musicians and you, you as songsters and you as songwriters, um, you know, take heed of some of the, the traditions and some of the, the practicalities of how the IWW has done and continues to do. Like here's a whole Canadian IWW songbook many of the tunes of which are all rewritten IWW songs from a Canadian uh, working class and uh, work struggle uh, perspective from uh, wobbly musicians like Len Wallace and Jersey Dimney and others. Um, uh, this is actually an old, a fairly old book now, but it's still a great book to look at to see what some of those Canadian songwriters were doing with the IWW tradition and the IWW songs themselves. And as Utah Phillips used to say, you know, you can sing those, those great folk hymns like Blow the Winds High Ho and so on and so forth, but it makes a lot more sense to get your message across when you say, you know, dump the bosses off your back. <laughs> so there's a lot to be said for that in terms of, of creating a message and crafting one. And of course, the, the tune that you use is very important. It could be an expropriated tune, of course, and that, that was the way that the IWW very often did it. So that's my, those are my parting remarks, and let's talk Wait, a little. We got 10 more minutes. Do you, yep. I wonder if there's any other songs in the room that we didn't get to yet that are in this tradition. No, no more. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty. There's plenty. There's plenty. There's plenty. We've got a song yeah. that Charlie has done with us that Ann wrote. Can we do that? 
Okay? Absolutely. Let's Absolutely. do Rich Man's House, okay? We don't want to waste the time if we Charlie, come to Rich Man's House for this. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Come on, we'll do a sort of us. We'll do it whatever you want. We'll do it like this. Sure. Sure. Well, I went down to the Rich Man's House and I took back what he stole from me. Took it back. Took back my dignity. Took it back. Took back my humanity. Oh, I went down to the Rich Man's House and I stole back what he stole from me.
Steve Deasy going to talk about Joe Hill a little bit. Yeah. I'm just going to tell a little story. Um, I heard it from George Mann, so it may or may not be true. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to use you as the Snopes.com here. In the, in the but it wasn't just a mistake that they would take these um, hymns and turn them into anthems. Uh, the powers that be used to send the Salvation Army bands out to drown out the IWW strikers in their songs. And so when you when you hear a pie in the sky when you die, what Joe Hill did was he thought, oh, I'll write words to that song. And then he turned the Salvation Army band into their backup band. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I, and I think that that's absolutely true. So, so it was a way they would send these bands out to drown them out, and they would be supporting it, and they had so many workers singing, and they all did the songs that their songs were still coming through. And so every time the Salvation Army bands brought new songs, we had new wobbly lyrics. So. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's a book that was published about 35 years ago or more by Philip Foner, which is called Fellow Workers and Friends, and it's the first person testimony of these free speech strike participants in the on mostly West Coast free speech fights that the IWW engaged in when they were trying to establish a union presence in any new city. And so the the Exactly what Steve, Steve described was, in fact, described by some of the, the people who participated in those free speech fights, uh, where the, uh, the Salvation Army bands were, in fact, set upon the union organizers in the streets to try to drown them out. And that is, in fact, true. Say the name of the book again. It's called Fellow Workers and Friends, and there's a subtitle about the free speech fights of the IWW. I'm not sure the exact words, but it was Philip Foner. Uh, and it was, it's probably long out of print, but you know, bookstores and, and various collections that you run across, there'll be copies. Somebody shuttled a copy to me that they found in a bookstore in New York somewhere, New York City somewhere. So it's a great little book because that first person history is there. Okay, I think we're done. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks to all our musicians. Thanks to Carly King. Yeah.